Our country has been hijacked by terrorists worse than Al-Qaeda, worse than Al-Shabaab. My brother, my sister, worse than Osama bin Laden. In fact, I would prefer to live under the governance of Osama bin Laden to living under the governance of the Nana Akufu Ado Baomia government, especially Baomia. With Akufu Ado, we gave him the benefit of the doubt. We had a certain kind of performance from Mahama that we were not so happy about. So we decided that he should take the back bench. He was in the days of Dumso. The horn of Ghana came to a standstill. We were all angry. We wanted the nation to move in a very fast motion. Especially that we had the biggest man-made dam in the world. If not the biggest, one of the biggest in the world. Yet, we had Dumso as our middle name in the days of Mahama. We were not happy. We overlooked every other thing that Mahama did. And decided that, come what may, he should take the back bench. He took it in good faith. Took the back bench. But before he left, he told us one thing. One day you will remember me. One day, if you remember me and you don't cry, then you must smile. In other words, you must remember me for either the good or the bad. Today, many people are gravitating back to Mahama and saying, yes, Mahama, you could have done better. But the little that you did in the Ghanaian palace, in quotes, is better than the elephant that is being done right now by this criminal government in power. My brother, my sister, today we see the city more than hemorrhaging. The city has gone beyond hemorrhaging and is now comatosing. The city, my brother, my sister, has become worse than a toilet paper. Today, my brother, my sister, you hold the Ghana city and you start bleeding. You have hemorrhoids, internal and external bleeding all at once. Today, my brother, my sister, it's one of the worst times to be a Ghanaian. Today, our national anthem has become a mockery. Our national motto has become a mockery. Freedom and justice. I don't see the freedom. Neither do I see the justice. Elections are coming. Ballot boxes are going to be stolen one more time. Elections are coming. People are buying votes. Is that the freedom and the justice the nation stands for? Misinformation all over the place. Calculated at bringing mayhem to our nation. Do we love our nation or we just love our political parties? Mahama says it's time to reset this nation to the NDC days. Well, I want to say, I want to say, I want to see the nation reset into better times than the NDC days. In the NDC days, we are doomed so. Even though towards the governance of Mahama, doomed so was sorted out. It was too late for Mahama to get our trust and be voted back into action. I want to see the nation reset into better days than the NDC days. I don't want to see this nation in the hands of the NPP anymore for the next 7 million years. These people are traitors. I am ready to see the nation give Mahama a chance. But I do not want to hear that the nation should be reset to the days, the glory days of the NDC. No. I want to see this nation reset into the glory days of Kwame Nkrumah. That is what we should be looking at. They say shoot at the moon. And if you miss, at least you hit the stars. My brother, my sister. Mahama has a unique opportunity to write his name in gold in the history of this country like Kwame Nkrumah did. If he's brought it back into power, like Trump has been voted back, he won overwhelmingly whilst I was in the United States of America. I don't like Trump. Trump is not my man. I don't like him because he's a racist, a criminal racist. I don't like Trump. And everybody knows that I am not a fan of Trump because of his criminal utterances. But America decided to vote a felon into the presidency. You know who a felon is? 
Somebody who has been labeled a criminal by the courts of America. That's a criminal. But Americans decided that this is their president. For the first time, we have had an official criminal as the president of America. At least, the Americans are bold enough to take their former presidents to the courts and be bold enough, my brother, my sister, to accuse them of some kind of crime and go ahead, my brother, my sister, to convict them, not in our jurisdiction. In Ghana, our constitution is a white elephant. In Ghana, our constitution is a criminal booklet. In Ghana, our constitution is worse than a toilet paper. It gives only credence and power to criminal heads and leaders. A, cr a criminal president who has stolen all this while cannot be taken to court and be convicted for anything for how many years of stealing? I remember when John Benjamin was the UK uh, counselor in this country. High Commissioner, what did he say? As parting note, he told us he was looking forward to see some of our leaders convicted of some crimes. Because whilst you are in opposition, you are quick to say, this person is a criminal, that person is stealing. Yet when you come into power, you seem to be so enthused about the gloriness of power. And you forget totally about the criminality that you talked about before you came into power. It's a paradox. So to President Mahama, I am not entirely satisfied with resetting this nation to the NDC days. Ghana deserves better than the NDC days. Ghana should be looked at the Kwame Nkrumah days and beyond. Again, we should shoot at the moon. If we miss the moon, we will not miss the stars. This notwithstanding, I don't want to see the NPP in power anymore. And I've told you, should I repeat it? I just returned from America. I just returned from Jamaica and some other countries. Should Baumea win this election, I am back out of this country. I will never stay in this country. It means that Ghanaians are immune to pain. Ghanaians are immune to disrespectful behavior. Ghanaians are immune to criminal behavior. Ghanaians deserve no sympathy. I will not be part of a nation like that. I will leave until Baumia is out of power. Thankfully, all the statistics from well-meaning organizations are saying that Bawamea will go back into opposition, no matter how much bribe money they pour on the people of this nation. Now the next thing I want to look at, and I please indulge you to open your ears and listen with rapt attention. Oh my God. Now, this thing I'm also taking from Ghana Web, and it says, Election 2024, NDC wouldn't be able to collate results. And this is Napo speaking. I read, Vice Presidential Candidate for the New Patriotic Party, Dr. Matthew Opoku Prempe, has reiterated that the National Democratic Congress, the NDC, can never collate their results for general elections. He says they do not understand how the system works. I will continue to struggle as they have done over the years. Napo, as he is affectionately called, made this known when he spoke in an interview on old Tafu based Asafwa radio. NDC can never collate their results. It will be like it has always been over the years because they have not come to understand the system and how it works. Collating results is not about IT. When NDC went to court, they said they came because of overvoting, but they were told that nothing of the sort happened. They lack an understanding of what happens on polling day. If you don't understand the dynamics, just like the NDC, you will do a spreadsheet 
to calculate your results and claim some constituency engaging over voting. But the bottom line is that you don't understand how things work. He said. <laughs> Is this a way of setting the pace for an election rig? Are they trying to rig the elections by preparing our minds already that NDC will come out again and say that they have been robbed and they will go to the courts and say that the elections were rigged and they are already preparing the minds of the people. I'm asking. Is Napo saying this in preparation of a gargantuan rigging of the elections? All the major prophets who prophesied the coming of Nana Akufuado have turned their backs on Nana Akufuado, except one hypocritical one who is still lacking in Kumasi there, drinking the milk and the honey from the bowels of the NPP. Name withheld for obvious reasons. My brother, is this a way of preparing the minds of the populace to a gargantuan rigging of the electoral process? A lot of ND, NDC people claim that the last elections were rigged. Even some NPP people, deep throat sources, attest to that fact. My brother, my sister, wherever it is, it's time to open our eyes very wide and watch the electoral process and make sure that these guys, so arrogant, sitting at the helm of affairs of this nation are booted out and the iron gaze closed permanently on them i don't like them they are so arrogant so pompous so boastful yet they are most empty even canada japan doesn't want to get near them anymore as for napo it looks like he was forced on baomir Every utterance he makes, in fact, def defies common sense. And sometimes you want to find out if his doctorate, in fact, his degree has any pedigree. I leave it here. <laughs> now, the last thing I want to look at, and I'll be done for the day, is this one also from Ghana Web. And it says, Mahama's leadership unfit for free SHS continuity. University Lecturers Coalition declares. And I read, Now a group of university lecturers advocating the sustainability of the free senior high school uh, policy in Ghana has expressed reservations about the ability of former President John Dramani Mahama to manage and sustain the initiative. Now, the group known as University Lecturers for Free SHS Ghana has declared that Mahama's leadership, track record, and policy uh, inconsistencies render him unfit to oversee the continuity of the flagship educational policy. I am glad that university lecturers are partaking actively in our political process. And I applaud them. But let us look at the merit of this. Now, when you look at the photograph of the so-called coalition of lecturers and blah, 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 they are all wearing NPP t-shirts. All of them are wearing NPP t-shirts. All like me wearing Marcos Gavi colors, sitting right here on radio. The UNIA colors. My brother, my sister, they are wearing the colors of the NPP with Mahmoudou Baumia's photograph and boss on this already. They have taken a stance politically. So it is no more about policies. It is about the political party. How many people understand this? 
My brother, they are behaving as if without the free SHS, Ghana cannot move forward. Two, they are also behaving as if the free SHS is the most important thing in Ghana. The economy is in shambles. Ghanaians are running out of this country, running away from the so-called free SHS. Ghanaians are dying in their droves. I just returned from Jamaica. Two Ghanaians were killed on the streets of Montego Bay and Kingston. Ghanaians, my brother, my sister, are being shot and killed on the streets of America. I just returned from America. Is the Ghana embassy in both places aware? Even if they are aware, do they care? I'll tell you what happened in Jamaica. A Ghanaian was killed in Montego Bay. My brother, my sister, according to the information I got from Ghanaians in Jamaica, they contacted the Ghana embassy in Jamaica about the death and the funeral of this Ghanaian. And the embassy in Jamaica said that it is not a funeral house. The embassy is not a funeral house. The embassy does not partake in funeral and burial activities. It is only for diplomatic purposes. Hallelujah. Ghana near where we were Jamaica. Ya kunu ya 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 ewa Jamaica. Ghana embassy ewa Jamaica. Ghana embassy say. Eye embassy na enye e yefie. And yes, yeah, yeah. They do not partake in the burial of dead Ghanaians. They are only interested in diplomatic activities. And this I'm telling you from the bowels of the meeting that I had with the Ghanaian community right there in Kingston, Jamaica. Can you trust such a nation? Let an American cockroach make a mistake and fly from New York City and come right here into Accra, Ghana. Let somebody in Choco make a mistake and pour hot water on this cockroach. All the American aeroplanes will land in Choco to investigate how an American cockroach was scalded by a Choco hot water. Yet in our country, when we die, we are worse than dogs. Our embassies are only interested in ex gratia and big money. We don't care about the average Ghanaian. We are only important when election is up so they can get our kokromoti. I was so sad when I heard this. They just pick up their cronies. And put them in embassies all over the world. India, China, and some other countries that are not even found on the map of the world. They put them in there and siphon the taxpayers' money and give to them as salaries. They are blowing money out there. Yet they are not doing anything that is diplomatic. It's a shame. These university lecturers, much as I want to say I respect your opinion... Let us not see the dirty free SHS as the only solution to Ghana's problems. What kind of education is this? My son goes to school for two days. He comes home for three trillion years. Is that education or is it a joke? Why is it that Ghanaians are not interested in quality? They are only interested in free trouble. This dirty free HS, HS, Free SHS. And you think it is the biggest thing that the government has achieved? I hate this dirty free SHS. I go to America. I go to Jamaica. And some other places. Ghana is far richer than Jamaica. But go and look at the educational system in Jamaica. Even that, they are not boasting about it. Bring the average Ghanaian school child... Compare that to a Jamaican street school child. You'll be shocked the level of education the two countries have. 
Yet you are here making so much noise about free SHS, free SH, because the average Ghanaian is only interested in free things. Free, it doesn't matter if it's poison that they are giving to them for free. Hey, the average Ghanaian can drink poison today and die so that he will go to God and tell God that at least he ate before he died. What is this? Free SHS. They are feeding the children allegedly with, with expired rice full of weevils and whatever, unfit for even animal consumption. Is that education? Educationally, statistically, we have descended so low beyond education in Afghanistan. Is this education? When I was a little child, education in Ghana was superb. In fact, we were well educated in the days of Kwame Nkrumah and beyond. We were so good. Free education was under Kwame Nkrumah. We enjoyed it. So many people were sent out of the country, educated and brought back, employed in this country to help with the movement forward of the nation. Not today. They are only interested in churning out so-called students. Do you like this free education? Or you are one of the dunderheads that think that anything free is good. I don't like it. That notwithstanding, free education is most important. But not this free education. This free education is poison. Some free things are poisonous. Your children are eating expired rice. Full of weevils and akate. You go to eat rice that has bed bugs in it. You are eating rice that has checha flies in it. You are eating rice that has gogomi in it. You are eating rice that has... Or is it part of the protein? When I was in school, they used to give us beans. And the beans had so many insects inside. And when we complained, the matron of my school said, Ah, when you cry, now my mother said insects were very proteinous. Mumbi some science teachers on the catcher mo a very proteinous and one who said yeah no one in a protein why increase a plant and animal protein so the only protein they give to the students is weevils posterity will judge us so harshly i leave it here to god be the glory hey ghana we are only interested in political power. Not interested in the welfare of the average Ghanaian. A Ghanaian dies in Kingston, Jamaica. Ghana embassy says it's not a funeral house. It is not a burial site for that matter. Let the families take care of that. This will encourage more people to visit harm on Ghanaians. After all, nobody fights for us. Can you touch an American in Jamaica? Can you? They will stop all of you from coming to America. In less than six months, you become wise. Can you touch an Englishman in America? Can you touch him in Ghana? But with us, it looks like we are cursed. Our leaders have no common sense. They only are interested in winning elections. I leave it here.